much, Cindy Taylor, for um, joining us. She is a school counselor at Gulfport High School on the coast of Mississippi in Gulfport, Mississippi. So thank you so much for taking the time to join us for our interview today. Thanks for calling. I'm Brandi Lindell, the director of Gear Up Outreach for Get to College. And our topic for College Countdown Mississippi is all about transfer students. We know that so many students are going to college with transfer credits, whether that's through early college, AP courses, or attending a community college and then transferring. And so we thought that we would really uh, be able to focus on transfer students in this issue of um, the College Countdown newsletter. So, Cindy, let me start with you. How are you able to speak to students about transfer credit? What do y'all do? Does it start in the ninth grade talking about possibility of college credit? It does, um, because in our ninth and 10th grade classes, that's when we really start talking with students about their GPA and their course options. Most of our students in ninth and 10th grade don't get a lot of choices until after their 10th grade year. And at that point, we want them to have all the options open to them. So we start those conversations pretty early. Now, just for um, the audience to know, Gulfport not only has AP classes, but you also have dual enrollment and you have College Academy. Is that right? Can yes. you sort of tell us the difference between each of the, the three yes. options that you offer for your school? Yes, and we do. We, we go into ninth grade classrooms and tell them these three options and that they'll be coming their way so that they're prepared for that. So um, at the end of 10th grade year is when they really choose some of those options because for some of those options, they need an ACT score and a certain GPA, not for all of them. But um, basically our collegiate academy, which was previously called our middle college program is where students can go for two years um, paid for um, by the Gulfport School District. So it's a free two year associate's degree. Um, they do have to meet certain qualifications set forth by the community college. Those are standards that they have to um, make and that we have to make sure our students have in order for them to apply for that. So, um, and, and right now what that is, is a 21, 22 on the ACT and certain subscores. And so once they have those and we identify those students, we can talk with them about a two-year plan. Um, and that is a great thing for many of our students. Some of our students, that's a lot. It's overwhelming. They don't want to be um, in a college setting, maybe not pulled away so much from the high school world. Um, and so, and they kind of want to dabble in some college classes. And so we do offer several college classes on our campus at Gulfport High. So that's what they call dual credit um, classes, which they can take and they're earning a credit um, on their college transcript, which starts when they take that class and also at the high school. So we do that for pretty much the English, math, some of the you know, science and a history credit for those. And then the other option is AP courses. And AP courses can give you um, a, a credit in a class, but that's not the only reason our students take that class. So AP is kind of considered the, the highest level, kind of the, the gold standard for some of our selective colleges and maybe some of the honors college programs. Um, and so that's taught at, at a level set forth by the college board. So that's a pretty tough um, course selection to take. But those, there's an AP exam and at the end of that, then a student can earn based on their score college credit for that. So a lot, and then you can mix and match them. Most of our students uh, mix the AP and the college, but we do have a certain number of students that go all in with one or the other. Yeah, there's a lot of just crazy things I hear out there, like don't do that, they're not gonna take it. And I, I guess the short answer is, in Mississippi, we're privileged. I know Gulfport School District, we have a partnership um, with the, our community college and the universities. And so that is a very smooth process. So if you're staying in the state of Mississippi and you're going to your local community college and earning credits, that is not going to be an issue, particularly if you're earning the associate's degree through the Collegiate Academy, because that is already signed partnership. You pop in your associate's degree everything transfers. And we look out to make sure our students are taking exactly what they need to take that, that is transferable. Um, we do you know, talk with the colleges that are out of state, our students who are interested in, in different colleges. And they do have, I think it's called like a, um, 
what is it called, a transition advisor, a transfer advisor um, at those colleges. And we can either help make those phone calls or encourage the student to before they sign up for a whole bunch of classes to say, hey, is University of Alabama even going to take these types of credits? And usually they say, we do, we just may, may not count it as a math. We may count it as an elective. And so we want our students to know that going in. You know, that brings up an amazing point because it goes towards the thought students need to be thinking about this earlier rather than later mm -hmm. because if if you are thinking of going out of state or you do have a, a a reach school that you're you know really trying to end up at then you're going to have to make some necessary decisions based on that and so again mm -hmm. having those those um, conversations sooner rather than later which y'all start your conversations about college in the ninth grade at Gulfport. We do. Is that, and we you do. meet with parents. So yes. they're finishing the eighth grade right now, and mm -hmm. you will meet with ninth grade parents this summer. We actually already met with those parents because it's hard to get three grade levels in one summer. Wow. So we, because of their age and their, their limited options, you know, the younger you are, the fewer, you, you don't have your ACT, you haven't built up your GPA. Um, so we do those meetings early. And then in about two weeks, we're going to start meeting with our 10th to 11th graders and then our 11th to 12th graders. But, you know, I remember during the pandemic, you know, working at home, advising students on AP or middle college and making some phone calls to different schools. I remember one calling Ole Miss to the um, early acceptance nursing program because she was really torn between what was going to be best. And I didn't want to make that decision for her or give her advice. And so a lot of times, you know, if you're interested in a particular program, they can tell you what they're looking for, what they recommend. If we, I think if we had any advice to those of you who are watching, have conversations early, have your students do the research. Is there anything else, Cindy, that you would like to add that we haven't already um, covered? No, I love that. And I, I mean, I think a lot of students feel nervous about asking those questions or that they're bothering their counselors, but really like it's, it is our favorite thing when a student comes in with questions about their future, because how else would you know? You know, how much would you know, except if you go to somebody who's been doing this for a while to help navigate the process for you. And then same thing for my seniors who are graduating or transfer students in college. You, you find the counselor version you're, you know, of, of me at that institution because there's somebody that has that job that is happy to walk you through all the options and wants to do that. 